Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, it's been a little while, but you know, summertime, I try not to do this stuff because I'm out there trying to have fun fishing like everybody else is. So, um, we've got a really cool um, pattern we're going to do today. You guys are familiar with my alter ego streamer it's uh kind of a spin-off of a tabory snake fly it's got you know some other minnow influence um i guess you could say influence from some newer flies too um you know there's some zoo cougar stuff going on there um heifer groomer with the head maybe even a little bit of drunken disorderly although the head's kind of different um there's a few less materials in it but um the overwhelming question that comes out of people who I guess you could say don't fish uh, some of the bigger streamers that we like to do is hey can you can you tie those smaller um, yeah I do have glasses now I finally got prescriptions so um, and yes you can so I'm gonna show you how to tie this one today and I'm sure all you regular trout guys are probably salivating at this this is a a two and a quarter to two and a half inch version of the alter ego so basically what i like to call this is like a muddler minnow on steroids but not so far on steroids that it's you know six seven eight inches long this is like ideal trout food in a lot of places and i'm sure a lot of you are looking at this right now and your gears are turning in your head um there's some f finer nuances in keeping your proportions correct on this um, one of which is going to be a few things you're going to learn in this video. Um, I always try to help you out with some things. and This just comes with trial and error. So I'm kind of shortening the learning curve for you. But we're going to use a couple of different materials. Um, we're going to tie that exact same color right there. But for the tails, um, you know, most of your capes, saddles, and whatever, you know, a bulk of the feathers that we typically use for a lot of the streamers come from in here. But then there's, and granted, there's not a lot of these on each one of these capes, but there's all these little shorter ones that are on here that most people probably discard um, who tie streamers in the size that I do and fish them. Um, but now we can utilize all these smaller feathers. I'll also show you that if you've got some other things, if you have a pretty wide repertoire of feathers in your disposal, you can also use... Um, I know you wet fly guys are going to get angry over this, but you can use wet fly um, uh, hackles on there. You know, some of your smaller ones um, up to some of the larger ones, although there's a plethora of, I would say, small to medium sized feathers on those um, if you really want to fill the void. But this is going to give you, this video should show you how to use some of this stuff here. Uh, another thing too, um, because everything's a little smaller and compact. I'm going to show you a couple different things you can do to um, maximize your deer hair. Um, it's involving these little clips, which everybody's begged, borrowed, and stealed from Mr. Pettigen now. And then the other thing is, um, I am going to keep this fly true to form to its bigger brother, which uses fox hair in here. Everything's scaled down though, so you'll see, and I'll talk about it in the video, keeping your proportions correct. But this is where, if you've got a foxtail, like what's left of this one, that has much shorter hair, rather than trimming down and wasting this beautifully longer hair here to make a smaller fly, this is where I go through my tails and I pull out stuff like this. So I feel a little bit better now. I have an absolute perfect use for this shorter hair is on this little guy. And that's it. A couple of little things. We use some of these smaller um, 3D beads which work fantastic for these smaller flies. And in the midst of all of it I'll talk about proportions. So enough of me talking. That's it. Sorry no rants. Kind of turned a new leaf. It's a dark place last couple years. That's on, that's on me. So um, I might rant about something here and there but today I know I'm going to keep it pretty positive. So alright. So we have a 15 millimeter shank in the vise. We're going to use a smaller thread on this to start. This is an ADOT Vivas. Just because it's a smaller fly, you don't necessarily need 
know, heavier thread, but you could definitely use a 140. We're just going to start by laying down a thread base and pretty much closing in both those returns on that particular um, chain. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our cape and we're going to go down in here in these smaller feathers and we're going to pick out two that are relatively uniform in size and shape as you see here. We want our tail to be roughly like about yay long. Um, so I'll come in here, line these two up, lay them alongside like this. so, take one out. I'm just going to lay it right down the side of the shank. The shank is going to actually help you in maintaining the shape and the, not so much the shape, but how basically this feather is going to lay on the um, either side so that it's relatively flat. And not all shanks are created equal, so I typically like to find some that are going to keep them together. If you have to, you can pop the shank out of the vise. If it doesn't look like it's set up the way you like it, so like these ones are just a little bit slanted. I want them relatively flat. You can actually take that shank out of the vise and you can straighten them out yourself. Just like you see here. Lay down a thread base, trim the butt sections off of there. Next little thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take one piece of uh, the micro lateral scale you can use the same one for the entire fly. That's all you're going to need. How you set your flash up is entirely up to you. For a fly this size, I like it to be roughly shorter than the tail. So there's basically one section running down each side. I'll fold it over to the near side of the camera. And then I just trim that. And then you can take this guy and you can set it aside and save it. Next thing I'm going to do, you can do just about anything for the filler flash on this. I'm going to use a small um, EP, um, God, draw a blank here, sparkle brush. This is the small one, it's only like a one inch. You're only going to need a couple of turns for the back end of this, maybe three, four, five. It takes like four or five turns over that just because the thread's smaller. Take your bad scissors or wire cutters clip it flat. I always take the scissor itself, flatten that wire out, and just build a little bit of a thread base over it. If you want, you can take your Velcro, just kind of brush that out of here. Alright, next thing we're going to do is we're going to go in and take our white fox hair, try and find the short stuff, like we always do. When I'm working with this, I cut it right at the hide, set that aside. And then, while manipulating this in your hand, you're going to try and comb out all that under furrow without losing. And you'll see you'll get a bunch there. Flip it around, get the tips as well. Do the same. And then you're going to measure this. And you're going to want this to kind of bleed about, I don't know, a third or halfway into the tail. So I'll take it in my hand, reposition it, clip off my butt ends. Reposition it again, pinch it between my two fingers because we're going to reverse tie this. Lay it over the top of the shank, kind of roll it around first so that it distributes the hair 360 degrees. And if you have to do a little manipulation with your fingers, go for it. And then we're just going to build a thread collar. And you want to make sure that that thread collar goes right up. to where that eye is. And then we'll take our piece of tubing, wherever you use, hold it rearward. And reverse tie it off. Once we've gotten that, do your whip finish. Put a little layer of head cement on there if you'd like, or I'll use a little resin. Entirely up to you. And now you have the back portion of that fly. I've already got a pre-cut piece of wire. I know it's longer than what I need. Put it in there, bend it, 
fall off, that's okay. I'm gonna take one three millimeter 3D bead. That's gonna be on my connection. Pull that out. There's our tail section. Um, getting your proportions on this is going to take a little bit of practice if you're new to doing this, so don't get frustrated. Keep trying. Now I'm going to pop in my front hook. Take the same thread. Lay a thread base. As we do in all our articulated flies, we want to make sure our connection's set up so that our wires are together side by side. Tie it in. And like I said, the wire's a little long, which is fine. Doing this fast. Put that off with a bad pair of scissors. Now because I'm using a thinner thread, I'm going to actually go down this three times back and forth just to really cover it up. It's my second course. There's my third. Boom. Because there's no hook on there, I'm not going to put any kind of a um, clip on that. It should be fine. Next thing you can do, and this is just to kind of add some filler, is I'll take a um, woolly bugger marabou feather and down near the base here you can use one of these for several flies I'm just going to come in clip a little bit of that marabou apart I'm going to lay it around the top because I'm going to build a little bit of a filler here a couple turns hold the thread down just come right in there and clip those butt ends out. Go right over them. Next step is the same. We're going to take that sparkle brush. Make sure it's firmly secured. Go to about the midway point. Open spiral wraps. You do not need a lot on here. I would say probably three turns is enough. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Clip that out. And my furnace is about to kick on, so I'm going to shut this thing down. All right, I apologize. I'm back. My furnace stopped. So we got that flash brush in place. You can kind of just preen it a little rearward. Now we'll take that piece of flash we had left. And you can omit this. You really don't need to put it in, but I put it in. just gives it a little bit more of a pop up front. Tie it. Clip it off. So you have like a strand on either side, sort of. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, if it's a little long, just cut it. Like so. Um, next thing we're going to do now is we're going to get our fox fur. As we had before. Same thing, find a nice small little bunch. <clears throat> if you can, try and use the shorter stuff so you're not burning up all your good stuff for this. Go in. Same thing, come out your under fur. What you can also do too, is if you got some longer rabbit hair, you could use rabbit hair for this too. Um, what I typically do for that, but if I can, I, I like the fox fur a little better. So when I go to tie this in, same thing, I'm going to be reverse tying this front bundle. I want this to kind of bleed into that back section, so I'm going to cut it like so, transfer it, roll it. Pull a nice little thread collar there. Take your flash if it gets out of the way. Just make sure it's evenly distributed. It's most important. It's a little easier to do that when you're fit, tying with 8 dot thread. You can just kind of adjust. You want, typically your whole head section moving forward is going to be a little less than half of the entire front part of that front shank. Take your tubing, push it rearward, make your little collar there. 
I'm going to whip finish this. Be done with it. To put a little head cement on there, I'm going to put a little resin just over that thread wrap. Chances of that coming undone are highly unlikely, but that's going to add a little to it. Now we've got most of that done. Now, next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our gel spun. This is to do our deer hair collar and head. Bring that right up to the base of that bump of hair. And now for this one, I'm just going to use a regular... Um, it's I, I like for some of these small ones from others, this is like white-tailed deer. This is a really good... It's, make sure it's relatively straight. It's for like doing mothers and stuff. So I'll come in here, and I'm going to show you a little trick here. This is going to make your life easier, and you're going to waste less material. So once you cut... I don't know. I say a generous clump. It's probably... If you were to roll it up, it's about the diameter of a pencil, um, slightly less. You'll see there's a ton of under fur in here. You want to comb all that out. It's probably the most important step with this hair, which now there's millions of um, YouTube videos on this. Then we're going to take this and drop in our stacker. hair on this one's a little small. I'm using a smaller stacker than I like, but that's okay. That that keeps me honest with how much hair I'm going to use. Once I've aligned my tips like so, you want them about there. Here's what we're going to do here. So we're going to take that clip. Because this is a smaller fly, rather than just discarding all of this, I'm going to put that clip on there, just like so. Because I'm going to save all those butt ends. Trim that right where I need it. And see, I can save that. Just going to take those butt ends and then you're going to pinch that hair and that thread between your finger and your thumb. One wrap, two wraps, three wraps. Push down on it. Take three more through it. Dance your thread. Tie it off. Now, as you can see, it's 180 degrees. I didn't want to go 360. It's just like I'm trying to keep it true to form with the big brother of this fly. So I got a nice little collar. Now I can take this, all that deer hair butt sections there, because I'm going to use that, because we're going to spin this hair. Grab it kind of in the middle. One turn, two turns, three turns. Spin it. That gives me my first little bundle. And then I'm going to advance my thread in front of that. Because I should be able to get another bundle on there. <clears throat> you can do the same thing you just did. Comb it out. You see here? Line it up. And if you really wanted to, you could take those butt ends on that, see, and you could save that for your next fly. Drop that right in your hair packer. I suggest using a longer pair of scissors, it's easier to cut it. Because all we're going to use for this, and now I have, there's my next collar, I can save that for the next one. So, you're essentially being a, a little frugal with your, and efficient with your material. Same thing, one wrap. Two wraps, three, spin it. And this white tailed deer hair works wonders for these style of flies. It's all you really use for mothers, too. Advance your thread, and you can see I'm kind of preening that back so I can get in front of it and then I can whip finish it. I like to use a tool on this, so it just makes it easier for me got relatively large hands but you do whatever works for you there's no right or wrong way as long as you do it correctly and I've got that nice big crazy head so I'm gonna do our razor blade work here and how you shape this head is entirely up to you we're gonna have to do it a little bit more of an aggressive curl because it's a smaller head as you can see so your first push goes through and we'll go in and fine-tune it after Hold your collar down 
as you do here which the collars on these are shorter and if you got big fingers like me it can be kind of problematic make your shape you can fine tune this after you can spend a lot of time like I said in previous videos I usually because I tie in in mass as a commercial tire so I tie a lot of these in succession I'll typically when I'm done I'll just throw all these aside and do all the heads in one shot um, if I have a large order it could take several hours to do that but it's a little bit easier and it makes it um, a little easier to work with in terms of keeping the consistency of it all. So I'll come in here with my scissors and I used a curved pair for this. Just trim that a little bit, reverse it. You can go right in there if you want. If there's some that are crowding the eye, you can cut those out. It also works on that as a uh, cautery tool, burn that stuff right out of that eye hole. And then I'll come in and I'll take a look at it from the top, like right at me like this. And if something seems a little off, I can just kind of fine tune it with my scissors until I get the desired look. Any other little hairs that are in there you don't like. And that's essentially the fly right there. That's it. That's the mini. Um, and like I said, I think I got a ruler kicking around here somewhere. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, this one came in at roughly, here I'll show you, for the camera. Just a little over two and a half inches, I believe. So, there you go. That's it. It's a nice little slimy little fly, and as you can see, for so if you're a little um, daunted by some of the bigger ones, a lot of you trout guys, this is a killer size right here. Um, I'll have these up in the shop pretty soon. Um probably put a sep separate skew for these um, and I'll have them in a variety of colors so hope that was beneficial to you um, this is a great little fly to fish pretty much any time and uh, catches a wide variety of species aside from trout but I tie on an alter ego pretty frequently throughout the season so that's it man happy tying hope you enjoyed it if you like it tell your friends I don't do videos as regularly as I'd like to but um, when I usually pop one out, it's I like to think it gives you some good info that you can take back and uh, shorten the learning curve and get better at tying. So have a good day. Thanks for tuning in.